Thank you for listening to Fam Talk 89 FM. We are on air at the Tano International Hotel Nandi, and it's time for a new season of Radio with Pictures on My TV. Thanks to the support of UNDP, SCAFE program supported by the European Union, DFAT, and the International Women's Development Agency. Hey Francis, whether it's the national development planning process or the new sustainable development goals, according to the post-2015 Women's Coalition, which Family Pacific is a member of, democracy, equality, peace, as well as long-term national prosperity and well-being are some of the indicators of sustainable development. And if development goals and targets fail to ensure comprehensive sexual and reproductive health and rights, including comprehensive sexual, sexuality education and comprehensive reproductive services for all people, they're failing to address the structural imbalances, problems of power and patriarchy, and neoliberal globalization, which are the root of many inequalities and shying away from tackling issues around the marginalization, including of gender and sexuality, which are hard-won gains for the women's rights movement through the Beijing Women's Conference, Cairo and Vienna, and Rio conferences. Also, we have to remember that member states, our own governments, are obligated under international human rights law, including the Maastricht Guidelines, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW, which Fiji signed in 1995, the International Co Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, to progressively realize women's and girls' human rights using maximum available resources. That's setting the scene in this episode of Radio with Pictures, filmed following our Western Division consultation, which involved close to 50 women leaders from Rana to Nambranga, representing more than 3,000 women of all diversities, including young women and LGBTIQ and disability rights groups. In this episode of Radio with Pictures, we welcome Bonita Gio from the Pacific Rainbows Advocacy Network, Anita Devi to my right from the Wairoa Library Women's Club. Liliana Bavadra is joining us from the Visese Youth Club. And Emanganga is from the Songo Songo Vakamarama Nandronga, uh, hailing from Tiliva Levu and Noko Noko. Welcome to all of you in this episode. Now I'm going to start with you, Bonita. Um, let's talk about access to information and services. And is it different if your gender identity differs from mine or if you happen to live in a more rural or remote community? I believe it will be different if considering a person that grows up within the urban setting and those that with the rural setting. But in terms of accessing information, there are still barriers that can, uh, can be similar but in terms of us that live in the urban settlement, it's the stigma associated to our orientation in terms of gender expression and identity. This being said is the barrier to us accessing information because of how we are treated when we approach uh, services deliveries. So are we living in this kind of environment where everyone is supposed to be heteronormative? Is that what you're saying? That when we're delivering information, we need to, as we were talking to Jyoti last week, how are persons with disabilities accessing information? What kind of format or what kind of information, how should information be geared towards the LGBTIQ community? Is it any different or what would be that kind of specific tailor-made product? I think basically it shouldn't be different. No one should be prioritized with their gender. I believe we should be treated equally. But the thing is, it's how they treat us and how they understand us and the way we feel and the way we behave. That's the barrier to th us engaging in this kind of uh, uh, services and them treating us equally with the, with the rest of the public. What does that mean, growing up, when you're being treated in that way? I think it restricts your, um, your capacity to express yourself, express your feeling, and how you want to do it. 
So these things uh, suppresses your feeling, and that makes uh, people um, provoke and go other other places in order for them to be freely uh, expressing their feelings and mm. gender orientation. In, in terms of um, participating in decision making, your network has been quite active. Um, you engage not just within your own networks, but also across networks, like in our consultations. Um, how? What are the issues? Are the issues any different when you're talking to other women, other young people? Are the national development priorities any different to someone like you, Bonita? I feel that the issues around all women undif uh, uh, are similar mm -hmm. and they are not different. But it's the inclusion of the representation in bodies that's the problem. We are not represented in terms of decision making. So there is a need for uh, gender equality and gender inclusiveness so that our needs are represented, and that is uh, a priority for us. Thank you very much, uh, Bonita. I'm going to come across to you, Anita. Um, you have helped set up the Wailoa Loa Lively Women's Club. You're the treasurer. In terms of receiving information, you live fairly close to town, but um, are the women in your communities accessing information are you part of the decision-making process? Well, in our community, most of the women um, are not able to come out because uh, because of their own issues and problems. Uh, some of the ladies can't come out because uh, of their children. They have to look after their children and in-laws. And uh, many of them were not able to access any information uh, about what happening in this world uh, so uh, in our clubs we decided to uh, give information of what is happening in this world and uh, whatever s some of the information that we gain from this workshop any workshop we attend mm. we attend lots of workshop and any information we get we in our community, there are only 172 houses. So we are able to give them information about anything that is uh, important for them. And how do you share this information? Is it, are you printing material or you're sitting down and having club meetings or settlement meetings? How are you going about sharing information? Well, we, we do our clubs every week on Wednesdays. So we discuss in our clubs uh, to how to share the information. So uh, some of uh, us uh, share the information by going houses to houses and share with them that uh, this is what is going on with the government and everything that uh, we gain from the uh, workshops. Mm. Okay. Um, thanks, Anita. Um, Emma, for you, in terms of access to information, you're not exactly on the main road, are you? Yeah. So <laughs> we've been talking about women in rural and remote communities yeah. and the kinds of ways that uh, you probably can't access a whole lot of services. Mm -hmm. So for the women of your community, how are you accessing information or how difficult is it? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have to go and see Raturanga Nikoro. Mm. And Raturanga Nikoro, I have to pass the message to him. We discuss it. And then he has to go by himself and walk to a uh, uh, long distance from in the village. So he has to go and talk to the ladies and then tell them that we're going to have a meeting on such day. So he'll come back and give me the message. And I'll tell him that we are going to have a, because we don't have any community house in, the, in our village, so I always call them to come to my home. If not, we have to go to the Turangan Matangali's house, Fijian Bure. So we're going to go and sit down there and have our meeting with the Turangani Koro and the Turangani Matangali. They have to 
stay there with us until the meeting has finished. Okay, so that's the way that you organize. How do you collect information? How do you know what you want to discuss? How do you plan for these meetings? Because you live in the interior, yeah, don't you? Yeah. How far away are you from Singatoka town? It's 120 kilometers from town to Singatoka. Okay. Yeah. So if I attend a meeting, the Songo Songo Vakamarama, I have to hire a carrier which costs me thirty dollars one way and then another thirty dollars to come back mm. to reach my village. So I have to come back again. I collect from, uh, the message from all the what we have in that discussion for the Songo Songo Vakamarama. Then I have to come and see the Randi Nibanua and I'll come and tell them what we have in that meeting. So I'll sit down by her when the meeting, when we begin the meeting. So she'll keep on telling them, all the Marama there, 30, 30 women, mm. what we have discussed from the meeting. And then if he left, if she left after if anything, she, so I'll have to help her to tell all the Marama too, so that we can discuss that then get ready for what we discuss from the Songo Songo Vakamarama, I have to feedback to them what we have discussed. Okay. Yeah. So I was just talking earlier in terms of there are all these global commitments to women's human rights. You know, we've had the Beijing Plus 20 meeting. Mm. There's the new Sustainable Development Goals mm. happening. And then we have our own national development planning process, mm. which is an opportunity for women like yourselves to, to provide input. Given your example, Emma, mm. how, how long would it take for you to organize all the 30 women to go to Singatoka to, to provide input? Okay. Uh, we will have to sit down and uh, then we discuss the day that we are going to put all the things together on which day. And then one of our representatives will go down, not us, because mm. the, uh, transportation from will go if she doesn't have any money she'll go by a horseback go reach down before he re she, she reached down there's a creek there she'll tie the horse there and then she'll take a walk from there to reach down and when she come back she'll come back walk down and where the horse is and then she has to come back by a horseback to reach home and then we have to wait the day that she'll call us to come and finalize what she have, uh, they had in that. Uh, That's free transportation, but how long does that horse ride take? If she leaves at 8 o'clock, then she'll reach there around about half past 10. Okay. If, if Two she, and a half hours no, on horseback. Yeah, if, if, if they're galloping. Yeah. If not, so take 11 to 11.30. So this is what some of the things that women have to go through in, in rural and remote communities yeah. just to be able to organize, to organize themselves, to receive information and then to make sure that the information, what their issues are, are reaching the, the development process. Um, it's not the same, of course, if your village is based in Visese, uh, like you, Liviana. But um, how are you as young women participating in decision making? How are you accessing information? Um, is it, you, you obviously don't have to ride a horse to get to Nandi town, although it would probably be very cheap for you, right? Yes, um, very how cheap. How are you participating? We, the village headman comes around and, uh, and tells us to, to do a meeting and then we can raise up our concerns to them and then from there one representative goes to the village and then gives our concerns but and we also participate in uh, village meetings mm -hmm. but it's up to the headman if he says for all these to come then we'll come so if all the youth did attend all the young people and particularly the young women like yourself attended one of these village meetings what would be the issues you would be wanting to, you would be raising with in um, these decision making? Teenage forests? pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I'd raise teenage pregnancy because uh, it has a high rate in not only from my village, but it is a national problem. Um, most of the girls in the village are at high school after form seven, they get pregnant and then they leave school. But that's form seven, that's like 
the highest in high school. Mm. And then after that, they just stay home. Can I ask a question? Yes. Because it was something that Bonita mentioned. Um, and the young women aren't living as far away, as remote as Emma's community. Um, why, why are they getting pregnant? Who, who's not taking responsibility? Do they not have information? Do, can't I think they there's no awareness mm -hmm. and uh, awareness on the youths. Uh, many youths are being uh, causing a problem in the village. That's what the elders say. But I think there's supposed to be awareness on the village, on the youths especially. And then from there, they'll have to, we, we need more parenting mm. from mothers and uh, fathers so that when we are small, we should learn more about what what's is the going on with our bodies. So this means that at seventh form, the girls are not aware of what's going on with their bodies. Yes. And or is it that young men aren't taking responsibility for sexual practice? And I think the other problem is um, technology. Mm -hmm. There's more internet, there's more access to phones, so many changes occurs, and that's why the high rate of uh, teenage pregnancy and other problem occurs in Indonesia. I, I, like the, I like what you're saying in terms of the phones are resulting in teenage pregnancies. I yes. think I could go on about this for a while, but I think it, you're talking about access to information, right? Yes. But they're not accessing the right type of information. Yes. Bonita, I can see you nodding. I mean, seventh form and not being aware of what's going on? It, why is this happening? Well, uh, the way I feel about it, uh, I think it originates from the family. If the parent, if the mother, if the father, if the sisters, all members of the family play their role and accept their children and are open about issues and dialogue about issues, I think there shouldn't be a problem in trying to express your feelings and trying to um, talk about issues that you are going through so that your parents do not push the issue aside and leave you isolated because then when you you go wandering and you won't access information, you won't access services and it will leave, leave you out of the community. It's the point earlier in terms of sexuality education that it's not a bad thing, right? We mm. need to understand what's happening with our bodies. We need our young people to understand. So Anita and Emma, because you're obviously mothers as well. How are you dealing with this issue that um, has just been brought up by Liviana? That, that how, how can we address the fact that young people are not accessing information? What are you doing in your clubs to make sure that there is access to sexuality or sexual reproductive health and rights information? Anita? Um, in our clubs, there are two young members who are attending our clubs. Uh, they are also schooling. So we got the information from them about the uh, sexual information. Sexuality information, information. yes. Uh, and also, uh, my son is in class seven. He is also doing that, uh, that kind of issues. He's so also it's the family life program. Yes. Okay. He's also dealing with that problem, and uh, when I go to study his books, uh, we have to be more open with them, mm. so that uh, he can understood what is wrong and what is right. So it's all most of them. It's all depend on their parents, how they are going to uh, tackle with their children. Emma, how are you dealing with this? Um because it's not, a, it's not just an issue confined to the more urban mm -hmm. centers. We're hearing, as the discussions mm -hmm. have gone on, that there's a high rate of unplanned pregnancies. Mm -hmm. um, what needs to be done and what, how are you trying to address it? Thank you. I went to attend a workshop about the sexuality. Mm -hmm. So what I did after the two days I attended the workshop, I came to the shop, I bought the young corner, you know, we have to do that yes. when we reach home, and to reach the village. So I went straight and see the Turanganikoro and the, the uh, chief lead. So I talked to them, I gave them the Yangone, and I told them what I have learned. So, and then we decided to have a workshop for the young youth. So they came, we 
I took some uh, pamphlets, air information to yes. go and uh, explain, explain to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we told them. We don't want this to be happening in our village, mm -hmm. as we know the distance from the hospital to our village if anything happened there, and the road condition. So we want you to take this in granted, not to uh, take it lightly. Mm. We want you to be educated and wait until you tie your... You get married. Get married. Then okay. if you want to have a child, then you are free. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of setting some rules and boundaries. Yeah. Okay, what does this mean then in terms of national development planning? Because, I mean, you are, we're, we're talking about unplanned pregnancies, we're talking about uh, population numbers changing. Um, so what, what do we need to do in terms of the national development priorities, one, to address these issues, but also what are the other development priorities that you, you've been thinking about, Bonita? Well, I think uh, uh, the stakeholders need to work in collaboration with the community because I think both play a role. The, col the stakeholders need to streamline their activities, need to streamline their services to include the participation, to include these women, as well as the women group, as well as the youths. They need to take ownership themselves of these services. In that way, if they do it together and work in collaboration, then I think the issue can be addressed and can be uh, decreased. One of our earlier discussions, Satya talked about, and so did Nani Sebo, you know, Tabu and Ra, that health services need to be targeted. We need to be um, making sure that it's at the local community level, that the even the community health worker could be trained up to be um, communicating and, and being more involved in the different types of health services. Is that the kind of investment you want to see in terms of national development? More targeted, more focused programs? I think it would work best if mm -hmm. we share the knowledge. If the knowledge, uh, knowledge stays within the health sector, stays within the health workers, then it leaves other community at risk and they are vulnerable to exposing uh, illnesses and all these things that comes. So I think that information should be shared, skills should be shared, so that other women are able to uh, secure themselves, secure their family in the setting that they are in, whether it's in the rural or in the urban. The main priority is for you to know what to do at that particular time. Liviana, you raised the point in terms of um, young people having access to telephones. Um, and listening to Bonita and that, and that information, health services, delivery, sh how could we, what would be the information that young people need on their telephones to help them to lead healthy lives, to lead well-informed lives? Is that an investment that's needed, that, that health promotion should take place through the phone but targeted, the right kinds of messages? Yes, the, like uh, health tips. They have it in, I think, Vodafone, and they send health tips to different phones if you subscribe to them. Should that be a free service, though? Because if you don't subscribe, you're not getting the information, yes, and if yes. you run out of credit, you can't subscribe, right? Is if that it one could so be free. A free yes, health service. Health services to phones, hmm. uh, preferably teen, teenagers. If you sign up for a SIM card, they put your age, mm. so if your age lies between 18 or 35, they could send uh, health tips to those individual phones. So social marketing should now take into, because social marketing is about changing attitudes, mm. yes. creating awareness, so health, social marketing via the telephone, useful. but free to young free people. Um, Anita, in terms of the National Development Plan, what, what kind of information, what are the development priorities for you and women like you in the Western Division, where would you like to see the focus for the next five years? Um, mine is the price of the goods mm. that are increasing day by day. And uh, as women cannot afford it because uh, the price of the goods are very high and uh, the wages is so low that uh, we have to, first we have to see our children. 
their needs and after that uh, if we have any elder people at our homes we have to look after them also so the price of goods is getting very high and that's our main issue and also there should be some cleanup campaign also going on uh, like uh, there was uh, once in 2012 um, cash for work the women who are staying uh, home they are doing cash for work so the eight people they are paying them for cleaning up uh, the areas okay thanks Anita Emma very quickly what's your priority for the national development plan uh, in our pri a priority for development plan uh, because the, the poor and the na uh, narrow road there mm. for transporting to town I need the infrastructure so yeah. invest in infrastructure yeah. and keep investing in yeah. those roads make yeah. sure that you don't have to I mean I love the idea of being able to ride the horse but I, I'm sure because I live in the capital it, it's like a, you know it's an exciting thing yeah. but I'm sure it's not very practical all the time I uh, took it for an example uh, there was a woman pregnant and then we tried to get the ambulance from Singatoka town and we can't go through to them and we have to find somebody a solution to go and get the transport from town mm. and one young girl age 18 at night time she went she rode the horse yeah she rode the horse at night time so she managed to reach the police station from there she came back by the police van thank she, you yeah. thank you um emma and that's why we have a comic book series called heroines because that's what women are doing yes. they're getting on horses and they're getting the messages out very quickly bonita in terms of national development plans sustainable development goals what direction should we be taking as a country i think the constitution play a very important role in terms of uh, coating certain rights and how it can be uh, responsible to the citizens. So I feel that our constitution need to be broadened and uh, encompass the need for uh, gender expression and oriented uh, issues regarding our, um, our community. So I think that more emphasis on the Jog Jakarta principle should be put into the Constitution. Okay, because the Constitution is the basis from which we want to see these development goals and targets. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode of um, Radio with Pictures, Emma, Anita, um, Liviana and uh, Bonita, as we've been hearing that if our development goals, if our targets are not ensuring these comprehensive sexual reproductive health and rights targets. We're not going to see the changes. We're going to continue to see the structural imbalances, the problems of power um, of young men, even over young women, where young women aren't able to, to determine what happens to their bodies. And that kind of expands notions of patriarchy and globalization, which are very much some of the root causes of the gender inequalities which continue. With that in mind, don't forget to join us for another episode of Radio with Pictures next week. For now, it's back to you, Francis. Thank you, Sharon. And we'll be back at the same time next week for another episode of Radio with Pictures. And don't forget to tune in to Fam Talk 89 FM Suva if you are living in the Nausori and Navua corridor of Fam Talk 89 FM Lambasa on air from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Wednesdays in Lambasa Town.